Even though as clarinetists, we get made fun of for being so picky about our reeds all the time, sometimes it genuinely is the reed that's causing all of your troubles. So I'm gonna go through and demonstrate some reads and sort of describe to you like what the issue is with the reads. So if you're having similar problems, you'll know that you might be having similar read issues as well. If you like this video, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel so that I know that you're enjoying this stuff and so that you can see the future videos that I do that you may also enjoy. So here's read number one. I'm gonna play some stuff that sort of shows the issues with this read, and then I'll describe what the issues are. So before I tell you, I want you to guess in the comments what you think the issue is with this read. All right, if you guessed that it is too soft, you are correct. This is a classic example of a read that's too soft where if you play loud at all or start to put any like embouchure pressure at all, it just sort of just closes up and the sound totally pinches off and dies. And on the high notes, it has to play really, really flat because you have to open up and drop everything down so much to get the, the high notes to not just completely pinch off that the pitch ends up being super duper flat. Unfortunately, there aren't really any uh, visual cues or clues that your read may be too soft, unless of course you take it off and right here it says Rico size two, then your read is too soft. Okay, unless you've been playing for like a week or maybe a month, then it's okay to play on the orange box Rico size two. But if you've been playing any longer than that, they're probably too soft. They're just made for students and beginners. And once you start developing the proper embouchure and, and some embouchure muscles, they're just too soft. So you may not have any visual clues, but if your reed is closing up when you put even the tiniest bit of embouchure pressure on it, um, then that's a good sign that it is too soft. All right, here's the next read. <laughs> So this is the opposite end of the spectrum, and this is an example of a reed that's probably too hard. And you may notice that this is actually a different mouthpiece because this reed is good on my normal mouthpiece, um, but this is a slightly more open-tipped mouthpiece, uh, so it's too hard for this mouthpiece. So remember that reed strength has nothing to do with how great you are as a player. It much more matters on the tip opening and the facing length and other aspects of your particular mouthpiece. So harder isn't always better and a read that like this which is good on my normal mouthpiece isn't good on this mouthpiece now again the too hard of read doesn't have any visual clues that it's too hard unless again it's like a size five or six or anything greater than four and a half probably for most people there are however indications in the sound that we could hear so the first clue is that it's really hard to start notes it takes a lot of effort to there's sort of always like a fun and it takes a lot of energy to get the notes going. If you find yourself running out of air a ton, like you can only play like a measure or like two notes at a time before you have to breathe because you're running out of air, that could be a good sign that the reed is too hard. And especially the, the lower notes and like the throat tone notes, sort of these, these left hand notes in the, the lowest register will be really fuzzy. Maybe the high notes will be a little bit better because um, the reed's holding up on those high notes, especially when you're playing loud, but trying to play soft on any notes throughout the range is like really fuzzy and, and quite challenging. Okay, now we're moving on to the reads with some more fun visual clues. So I'm gonna go ahead and show this to you. Hopefully it focuses. Uh, and I want you to see if just by looking at it, you can tell what's gonna be the issue with this read. And then let's play it and, and see, see what it's like. <laughs> sound too 
too bad. Can you guess what its issue is though? This reed is extremely waterlogged. I've actually been soaking it in a glass of water for about five hours now, which you should never do with your reeds because what it does is it makes them, first of all, get this sort of like transparent look where the, the tip is like almost see-through. You can also get some clues by looking at it by like the grain of the wood is quite dark and on here it's like almost a little bit shiny uh, and, and really quite dark um, because the cane has absorbed so much water from sitting in the glass. You can also get your reeds waterlogged, maybe not quite this bad. Um, if you're playing the same reed day in and day out um, and like playing for hours at a time on one reed and just like beating up that reed and having it constantly being wet with your saliva, it will, will eventually get waterlogged like this. Also, if you don't break in your reeds properly, that can contribute to them getting waterlogged more easily. Um, so the issues with a waterlogged reed are that you could hear the sound is like quite bright and doesn't really have like a core to it. It was very responsive, which was nice where like the notes were, were coming out right away, but it was really, really um, unpredictable and sort of like explosive sounds. Uh, and it just didn't have that sort of like core to the sound. And this is what'll happen if you use the same read over and over and over. Eventually it'll sort of have that. And you may not notice it because it's sort of gonna gradually happen. But then if you go from like a old waterlogged read to a new read, you'll be like, oh wow, there was like not good tone quality. Um, it was unpredictable how the notes were gonna come out. Waterlogged reeds can have all kinds of crazy things happen and depending on, on what's wrong with them and, and how they react to being so swollen with water. Okay, we're on to the next read. <laughs> So this one is another visually interesting one, but it's actually not the reed's fault in this case. If you can see, it's not on the mouthpiece straight at all. It's very skewed off to the side. This could also get the same effect if we put it down much too low, like that, where there's tons of mouthpiece over it. Or if you put it up much too high, where there's tons of reeds showing over the mouthpiece this way. You'll also get that same sort of not great sound. And what the issue is, is again, it's sort of like a too hard reed where like the notes just don't wanna come out. This can also occur sometimes with a reed itself, even if it's on really well um, and centered on the mouthpiece and not too high or too low. You can sometimes still get that same kind of effect where like the notes are really hard to get out and sometimes there's little squeaks or chirps in there where there, it will just squeak a really high squeak very suddenly. And that comes from a reed being unbalanced where just one side of the reed is thinner and the other side is thicker. Um, I won't get into that too much uh, how to test for balance and how to adjust balance um, because that's a little bit more advanced read topic. If you want me to make a video about that, go ahead and leave a comment down below and I can make a more in-depth read adjusting and read testing video. But if you're having hard time getting notes to start, make sure that your read's on properly. Uh, it's not off to either side or up or too low. Uh, and then if it's still having issues, even if it's on right, it may just be that the reed's out of balance. Okay, this next read can be a little bit tricky, so let me play it. So it's not too bad, it seems to be working fine, but if we take the reed off, even if you look at it, it may seem to be fine, but if you sort of run your finger along it um, and maybe like run it along your thumbnail like that, you may find that you get some something interesting happens. So you can see that there's actually a pretty big crack in this. Hopefully you can see that on the video. Uh, and that crack can cause serious issues. With uh, reeds that are, are sort of split like this, maybe you can sort of see it from that angle as well. 
Uh, with reeds that are split like this, when they're lined up perfectly, they can function almost as good as a normal reed. But you never know when they're going to go sort of off kilter and be split and then cause some weird stuff to happen. <laughs> Sometimes notes won't, won't even work if the split opens up. So it may be fine when it's together and, and like a normal read. And then at any moment, it can just sort of become split and open up and then cause everything to go awry. So it is important to be vigilant of little cracks like that. And of course, the most obvious way to know that your read might be an issue is if you have one of these. If you've ever played on a read like this, put it in the comments now. It's okay, this is a safe space, you can, can admit it, and you can know to never play on reeds like this again. Or any variation of this where you might have sort of like, uh, it, there's like kind of a tip to that reed, like maybe it'll work, or like big chunks like this missing out of it. These reeds do not work. You may be able to make a sound on it, but that doesn't mean that it's working well for you. You want your equipment to make things easier for you and not have to like jump through hoops and do all kinds of crazy things to adjust for your equipment. All right, I have one last bonus read. So can you guess what is wrong with this read? Actually, there's nothing wrong with this reed, but you may be able to see, uh, if I get it very close, you can see that there's still some tiny, tiny little chips in the tip of it, um, but it's actually okay. Sometimes reeds can have little, little tiny, tiny chips. Again, not giant chips, not this kind of a chip, but some tiny, tiny, very little chips in the tip are okay and the reed will still work totally fine. So you don't need to replace your reed once it has like the tiniest little bit of chip in the tip, but if it gets big or if it's not playing well in any of the ways that we've gone through with the other reeds, then that's the time to get rid of your reed and use a new one. And of course by use a new one, I mean break in a new one properly and put it into your rotation. So I hope that helps you to identify some issues and some ways that your read may be holding you back. I do want to give a quick disclaimer and sort of caveat that you can have these similar sort of results based on things not going right with your fundamentals of your embouchure or your air or things like that. So even though we are clarinetists and we do love to blame everything on our reeds, it's very important that you first take a look at yourself and make sure you're playing with the proper air support, playing with the proper embouchure shape, the proper voicing, uh, and getting all of those fundamentals going correctly. And then if things are still very difficult and you're having these specific problems, then you can start looking at your reed and other parts of your equipment. Thanks so much for watching. I would love to hear some of your crazy reads that you've played on down in the comments below. I know you all have done crazy things with your reads, so let's hear it in the comments. It's okay to, to get it out there. And now you know how to make sure that your reads are going well. So thanks for watching, and I will see you in another video.